Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We'll start talking about submodules next. So what's a submodule? So here's the definition. So if R is a ring and M is a module and M uh, left R module. So again, I as I said a few times already, we will usually just suppress this, this word left. Uh, and when we say just R module, we usually mean left R module. So suppose I have an R module then definition a submodule of m a submodule n of m well it satisfies two conditions firstly is a subgroup is a subgroup under it uh, under the addition operation subgroup under addition okay and which satisfies which satisfies the following property that uh, it's closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, it satisfies the following property: alpha dot n belongs to n for all alpha in the ring R and for all elements n in the set n. Okay, in other words, the set n is closed under addition and scalar multiplication. So that's what a submodule is. Okay, it's a natural definition. There, the the obvious examples. If R is a field K, this case recall that R modules are just the same as vector spaces over the field K. And of course, it comes as no surprise that submodules are just the same as subspaces. So, in this case, recall submodules of M, recalling the definition of subspaces, are the same as subspaces. vector subspaces of the vector space n okay okay now um, there are some obvious submodules always so given any module n i can construct two obvious submodules the zero module and the the entire module m so uh, these are sometimes called the, the two trivial submodules, the, the 0 on one end and m on the other on the other end. Okay. And uh, let us take another example. Uh, uh, recall that uh, last time we spoke about a uh, ring R. So, if R is any ring, then R is a left module over itself by the left multiplication operation. via the following action alpha acting on x is just alpha x for all alpha in the ring r so that's i think of that as scalars and x from the ring r again that's the module so this is the the left multiplication um, action that makes r into a, into a mod module over itself and in this module what are the sub modules so observe that if i take a subset of r is now a submodule for this particular way of making R into a module. It is a submodule means that, uh, well, by definition, that N is an additive subgroup, is uh, a subgroup of the additive group of R, and further, condition number 2 says that if I do alpha times n, now this is the usual multiplication in the ring, alpha n belongs to n for all alpha in R and for all n in n. Okay. Now, recall from the lectures on rings that this pair of conditions that we have just written out, these two guys <coughs> 
is exactly the definition of a left ideal. Okay, so in other words, uh, submodules of the ring R under this left multiplication uh, action is uh, are the same as left ideals of R. Okay, and uh, you know I leave this as an exercise for you. You can also look at the the right uh, submodule. So let's just quickly define that notion as well. Um, if R, or rather, if M is a right module. <clears throat> then uh, we can talk about submodules then uh, submodules of m r uh, so now we need to define this notion of a submodules so let me just say n is now a submodule of n then we say n is a submodule of m if it is closed under addition if n plus is an additive subgroup well it is a it is a subgroup of m plus is a subgroup and we have uh, you know the closeness on the other side n uh, acted on the right by alpha belongs to n for all n in n and for all alpha in the ring r okay so this is the the right uh, action and um, observe that just like you know we did the earlier thing we said if i take r thought of as a left module over itself then left ideals and left submodules are the same uh, similarly, if you think of R as a, as a right module over itself, then the, the submodules turn out to be just right ideal. So, if R is uh, considered as a right module over itself, considered as a right R module, then submodules of R turn out to be submodules of R are the same as right ideals of R. Okay, by the same uh, argument that we just gave. Okay, so uh, these already give us plenty of examples. So if I you know think of R as a module over itself. So, if you look back on uh, the lectures on, on rings and left and right ideals in rings and so on, uh, you can write down lots of examples. <coughs> Excuse me. So, for example, I can take, uh, you know, make various choices of rings. For example, I can take the matrix rings M and K and uh, in fact, the left and the right ideals of M and K were determined in, in one of the earlier lectures. So, if you recall the, the notation there, uh, uh, the, the ideals look like this. I can take any subspace V of k n and you had R of V which was the set of all matrices in M and k whose row space which means the span of the rows is contained in this fixed subspace V and then there was C of V which is similarly the, the set of um, uh, matrices whose column space is contained in V. So, let me just talk about the row space for the moment. I am just looking at left ideal. So, this is in fact a left ideal. So, in other words, it is a it is a sub module. Okay? So, this I am I'm sort of recall from the previous lectures. Okay, so that gives you an example of a left submodule of a of a submodule uh, of the ring of matrices acting upon itself on the left. Okay, and of course, similarly, I mean, this was a non-commutative ring. Uh, you can uh, look at commutative examples as well. So I could, for example, take any commutative ring. Uh, commutative ring. So of course, you've seen many examples already. So, look back on the um, 
the examples of ideals in commutative rings. So, now of course, recall that uh, left and right uh, there is no distinction anymore, left ideals of R are really the same as what we call two sided ideals or ideals. Okay, and of course, you know ideals were determined in many different examples before. Okay. So, this is just to say that you already know lots of examples of submodules because you already know lots of examples of ideals in commutative rings or uh, left ideals in non-commutative rings. Okay, so, that is already many examples, but let us do a few more. So, here are some more examples of submodules. Um, so, we number it 1 again. So, if I take the ring to be the ring of integers, then m uh, recall a z module is the same as uh, an abelian group. So, n is uh, any abelian group. Okay. So, that is a z module and in this case it is easy to show and I will leave that as an exercise that uh, n is a submodule is a submodule. So, let me just put z submodule of m. or maybe just say submodule. So, we already said the ring is z. This is a submodule of m is actually the same as saying it is a subgroup. There, it, there is no additional condition here. n plus is a subgroup of m plus. Okay, and, and the reason is not too hard to see. Uh, recall that the z module structure on an abelian group is more or less forced. Okay, you cannot do much, you have to use the, the addition in the in you know the underlying addition to define the multiplication by scalars. Okay, and so, in some sense, the, the same sort of argument uh, proves this statement as well that submodules are just the same as subgroups. You just pick a subgroup that is automatically a z submodule, okay, because multiplication by a number n is just repeated addition. So, it, if it is closed under addition, it is automatically closed under repeated addition. Okay, so, example 2 which is slightly less trivial which is our ring of polynomials in a single variable. So, let us take k to be a field and r to be the ring of polynomials and now here uh, recall from one of our earlier lectures that how do you construct modules over this ring k x. The way you do it is well a module can be obtained by starting with this pair v comma t. So, if I start with v which is a k vector space just in the usual sense of the word and I need to start with a linear operator on v. So, t from v to v is a linear operator okay, or a linear transformation. So, if I give you these two things then it uniquely defines uh, a module a kx module structure on v then recall uh, v becomes a kx module. by the following prescription. So, this this these two pieces of information that v is a vector space and t is a linear operator these two things define the actions of. So, how does alpha act on v? Uh, this is just the usual scalar multiplication. So, this is for all alpha coming from k and for all v in v. Okay. So, when I say alpha I think of it as the constant polynomial alpha is just alpha plus 0 x plus 0 x square if you wish you know I can just put zeros on all the other higher powers of x. So, the constants the constant polynomials alpha act on v by just scalar multiplication. So, that is the first and the special polynomial x power 1 the degree 1 polynomial homogeneous polynomial x power 1 or x the way x acts on v is given by t. Okay, so, this is you can think of these two as the two defining uh, properties. <coughs> and of course, these two automatically tell you what a general polynomial does. If I take alpha 1 x plus alpha n x power n acting on v, it is just alpha naught v plus alpha 1 t v plus alpha 2 t square v and so on. Okay. So, that was recall how we made v into a kx module. Okay, now, the question is what are submodules now? Okay, so, let us now ask 
what are submodules of V now. Okay. So, these are no Kx submodules. I am thinking of V as a Kx module now. So, what what is the definition? So, let us see when do you say something is a submodule. So, suppose n is a submodule means that firstly it is closed tender addition n plus is a subgroup of V plus and secondly it is closed tender scalar multiplication. Okay. So, it means if I take any polynomial P x from K x and I act it on V the answer is in n again for all v coming from n and for all polynomials p x in my ring k x. Okay. Now, what we will do is in particular we will apply this, this condition here that p x v belongs to n we will apply it to those two special polynomials. Let us take constants and let us take x power 1. So, in particular this implies the second condition means if I take a constant or if I take x Okay, take these two types of polynomials, I act it on V, the answer is again in N for all V in N and this belongs to N for all V in N again okay. and this is also for all scalars alpha and k. Okay, so, what do I conclude? The first condition which says that if I take an, a vector from N and I multiply it by any scalar from k, the answer is again in k. Okay. So, this property together with the fact that, so recall also we know something more about n, we also know that n is closed under addition is a subgroup. Okay, so, these two properties tell you exactly that n is a subspace, this is exactly what a vector subspace is. Okay, so, these two properties what I have marked in green say that n is a vector subspace of of V. Okay, and now, this additional property let us see what that implies T V you remember is just I am sorry X V you remember is just T V. So, this says that if I take an element of n and I add T on it I get back an element of n. In other words this says that the subspace n if I add T on it I get back uh, I mean it, it maps n to n vectors in n to vectors in n. So, what does that mean? Well, these two properties are exactly the definition of what is called a T invariant subspace. So, n is a T invariant subspace of V. Okay. And of course, you can just uh, reverse this entire chain of arguments and conclude that uh, a submodule is the same as a uh, a, a T invariant subspace. So, I can just put all my arrows back okay. and you have to check one last thing that if uh, T v is in n for all v then in fact a more general polynomial. So, remember this is how a general polynomial acts. Uh, the action of a general polynomial on a vector from n will also give me a vector in n okay. but that is because if it is T invariant then it is also T square invariant and T cubed invariant and so on. Okay. So, I will just leave this last bit of checking uh, to you and uh, here is the final conclusion that n. So, let me just record the conclusion that n is a submodule of V. It is the same as saying that n is a T invariant subspace of V. Okay. And this is the, the T here is it comes from the way V has been made into a into a Kx module, X is acting by T, okay, that is the T we are talking about. Okay. Now, uh, so that is the, the second important uh, example.